There are many ancient relics strewn across our planet, which are unimaginably ancient, hidden from inquisitive minds, often by a variety of factors, millennia of undergrowth, conspiratorial bodies, or even personal perceptions of historical truth. However, there lay a far more interesting, far more inspiring tale resting just beneath the surface of this illusion, just waiting to flourish. Previously, we covered some of the amazing discoveries made by a man known as Professor Potini. In particular, his extremely peculiar stone found in 1990 within a diamond mine in Sierra Leone within West Africa. It is known as the Sky Stone. Numerous specialists have analyzed the stone and concluded that it is somehow made of pure oxygen, with a color source which is, as yet, unknown. Unbeknownst to many, however, is that Professor Angelo Pitoni had many strings to his bow. He was a geologist, a botanist, discoverer of emerald mines, an expert in the precious stone lapis lazuli, along with many other talents. And although many perceive his sky stone as a defining discovery, we feel his actual defining discovery, his legacy left upon the unexplained mystery history of our planet, can be found elsewhere. He did in fact, during his lifetime of exploration, indeed discover something unique upon our planet. Something undoubtedly important, immensely ancient, and quite possibly, a last remaining remnant of an unimaginably old civilization which was once found upon the African continent. Found during his ventures deep within Sierra Leone, West Africa. The Lady of Mali. He examined the land at the foot of her mountainous form, and according to his calculations, the stone monument was indeed man-made and carved well over 12,000 years ago. Reaching an astonishing 1,500 meters in the air, it is an image of a woman's figure hewn from an entire face of Mount Lore. Predictably, due to modern academia and the entrenched, paradynamically cast spell, Upon many modern fields of study, the only explanation that can be ascertained for this clearly man-made, highly ancient artwork is that it is merely a coincidental, natural formation. In an interview with journalist Carmen Mikado, Pitoni explained that the statue is located to the north of the city of Conakry and close to the country's border with Mali. The geologist estimates the Lady of Mali to be some 20,000 years old. This concluded through the observations of displaced motions within a natural rockfall he found within the lady's form. He also spoke of caves in the area, which contained mummies, guarded by the locals, who he claimed rumored of their, quote, Atlantean origins. Unfortunately, Professor Potini died in 2009, so any other invaluable information he may have acquired regarding the area went to the grave with him. However, the Lady of Mali remains and will undoubtedly live on for many years to come. Just who could have built the Lady of Mali? Is she really a 12,000-year-old relic left by a pre-flood, pre-cataclysmic civilization? Or merely a natural formation? Do you believe an opinion based on a historical assumption? Or one based upon explorations, investigations, resulting in unexplained physical artifacts. We will let you decide. Many people from around the world have now, fortunately, been presented with and hopefully convinced enough thanks to platforms such as YouTube, particularly Egyptian constructional revisionists, to now realize that there are many as yet unexplained feats of ancient engineering which literally drenches these magnificent structures and its equally mysterious sandstone plateau below. Yet we further expose many other indicative features, which were seemingly impossible feats of ancient engineering, which we hope has helped a lot of people to realize that there are many fallacies in historical doctrine, many gaps in academic and curricular understandings, many things dismissed with flaky strategies and theories which have again and again, thanks to modern computer engines, been proven as impossible maneuvers. 
It seems many people, and a considerable amount of money, goes into keeping a stranglehold over the pyramid's possible origins and original function, inevitably shrouding these structures in a veil of secrecy. In addition to the original pyramid blocks and the enormous megalithic exoskeleton visible in a few obscure areas of the pyramid's lower regions, we have also in the past put forward the hypothesis that due to the advanced nature of many of the pyramid's casing stones and the drastic differences in ages they appear to be, all made with the same type of rock, thus to display such drastically different levels of erosion, is undeniably evidence of them being installed at many different times. Yet although claimed as being built within known history, no documentation of the installation of the blocks, or indeed any explanation as to how these pyramids were built, all remain elusive. Several different styles were put upon these monuments, we feel, at vastly different times within antiquity. We posit that they are clear proofs of a number of past civilizations' conservation efforts, but due to these compelling and visible proofs, one has to consider that the Great Pyramid's origins are vastly more prehistoric than could ever be publicly accepted, and due to these features having seemingly survived due to what we suspect was a number of considerable efforts to shield them from the environment by a number of different, extremely ancient, yet all highly capable, yet now lost civilizations, which we have identified in previous work as that of the Cyclopean civilization and the Polygonal civilization. But I digress. Many of you who have donated towards the channel and to reserve a book may be wondering when the channel's accompanying books will be published. However, I assure you Mystery History intends to go in-depth regarding his and other findings surrounding not only the ancient pyramids, but also the many other compelling, seemingly impossible ancient legacies found throughout Giza's plateau and many museums, and many other controversial sleuth-gathered factors from throughout antiquity creating the type of evidence-driven, visually illustrated examinational content in which the books will be exclusively focused upon. All of these factors are reasons why the books will not be written hastily. As my knowledge grows, so does my understanding of what makes ancient ruins so enigmatic, and I believe the larger my research, the better the go-to guides will eventually be. I just wanted to reassure you that Mystery History has not forgotten about any of you. Returning to our opening statement, however, many are now aware that there does not exist a valid explanation for the construction of the pyramids. Even if one had unlimited slaves, it is not a case of muscle, but rather a lack of space in which to utilize such. Yet what many who have not explored Giza and the surrounding connected ruins on foot are often oblivious of the astonishing array of ancient temples, clearly dating from the pyramid builders, not only lost for eons in the sand of the Sahara, but has preserved some in astonishing conditions. Ancient Egypt, its great pyramids, its eight-sided Cheops, its incredibly well-preserved, once long-engulfed temples, and the inexplicable stonework of ancient Egypt is but one of many areas from a world of ruins, which we not only intend to unravel as much as possible, but it is an investigational struggle which we find highly compelling. Fort Ransom is a small place within the state of North Dakota, USA, that may hold an enormous yet quietly held secret. In this small slice of the rural farming lands of the United States lies a place known as Pyramid Hill, a small, modest pyramidal mound which is very similar in shape and size to the curious pyramidal mound found in other parts of the world, such as Silbury Hill, a chalk pyramid within the UK. Long argued by a number of funded geologists as a mere natural formation, however, local residents, along with historical accounts within the area, have strongly disagreed with these conclusions, since their predictable acceptance by the academic community. A vast portion of the surrounding population believe, including a number of specialist historians and archaeologists, that Pyramid Hill is in fact that of a man-made pyramid. What's more, they hold to the belief that it is the oldest pyramidal structure on Earth. What makes this site the most interesting, we feel, however, and the reason for this video, is the writing stone which was found nearby some centuries ago. 
clearly very ancient cup and ring marks, and constructed to form some kind of communication. They have, however, remained undeciphered. They are incredibly intriguing, and are reminiscent of a hybrid between music and Morse code. Yet all attempts to establish a translation of the pattern have been unsuccessful. Located in the Cheyenne River Valley, in southeastern North Dakota, pitted mysteriously cup and ring marked boulders appear in Saskatchewan, South Dakota, Iowa, and many other sites all over the world. Just who created them remains a mystery. Was the writing stone left by the original builders of Pyramid Hill? If so, why is it an unknown language? Who wrote it? Is Pyramid Hill really the oldest pyramid on Earth? Built by an unknown culture who clearly spoke and wrote a highly complex and as yet undecipherable language? Perhaps one day we will find out the truth. There are many ancient monuments found all over the Earth which possess extraordinarily precise solar and lunar alignments. Ingenious designs, often many thousands of years old, constructed from stones sometimes quarried, cut, and transported to the sites from many miles away. This movement of megaliths was accomplished using techniques or technology as yet not understood, and to date, many of these megalithic stone placements are perceived as near-impossible feats of ancient engineering. And although many impressive examples of monuments which track the sun can be found to have originated from many different civilizations, the most notable of antiquity, most famous for a seemingly obsessive level of monuments devoted to the observing of the sun's path, was undoubtedly the Neolithics. One has to wonder, why was there such a fixation? Was the motivation for this mass of undertakings of a tragic nature? Was it out of fear? Fear created by a memory of a catastrophic event, possibly involving the sun's powerful emittance of radiation. Maybe they experienced the consequences of an ancient warming cycle. We may never know. Yet the most important question in our field is not why these volumes of solar-aligned relics were created, but how. How did our ancient ancestors, claimed as having existed over 10,000 years ago, construct such precisely positioned granges, hinges, barrows, and sun daggers? Something we have previously covered, an incredible type of sundial which tracked a sunspot across the wall of an ancient cave with each month solstice and new year precisely marked out across the walls. Yet the sundials in question in this video are a group of far more familiarly designed dials left by the Neolithics. These sun-tracking dials can be found across the Neolithic sites of Ireland, Scotland, Orkney, and England. First discovered by an American by the name of Martin Brennan, a 39-year-old from New York. Not only did he discover the true function of curbstones located in Noth, codename K7, K15, among others, he also cracked the earliest form of writing while studying the Irish Stone Age artwork. Earlier this year, a theory emerged on the internet by writer and journalist Ben Gagnon. He suggested that there was an image of a swan on curbstone 15 at Nonth. He claimed that while examining a photo he had taken of K15, he flipped it upside down and saw something no one had ever seen before – the faint but unmistakable image of a swan in profile. The true meaning or purpose of the curbstones had for a long time been heavily debated within certain circles. The intriguing cup and ring marks had been known of for some time. Yet as previously mentioned, though the most popular theory of the design on K15 was the claim that it was the depiction of a swan glyph, this hypothesis was rejected even before Martin's unarguably accurate translation was discovered. Martin identified the sundial while examining a passage mount in the Boyne Valley. And although sundials thousands of years old have been excavated throughout Europe, Many specialist individuals reviewing Martin's finds believe that the sundial discovered in County Meath is the oldest and possibly most important ever found. According to Martin, who has been studying megalithic Irish art for the last 10 years, Ireland's megalithic tombs are suffering from appalling neglect. Some of the most important passage mounds excavated previously 
have been ignored or conveniently completely sealed up. Martin's discoveries are undoubtedly remarkable and are of tremendous value to our ongoing deciphering of ancient antiquity and its past civilizations. It is a journey of discovery we find highly compelling.